Welcome learners to this program on hydrogen, which is discussed in unit 9 of class 11th chemistry book part 2. We will explain the chemistry of hydrogen in a series of 4 programs and today we will focus on the position of hydrogen in the periodic table, occurrence of hydrogen called dihydrogen, then isotopes of hydrogen and preparation of dihydrogen. Let us know the objectives of this program before we view this program. After viewing, you will be able to discuss the position of hydrogen in the periodic table, explain the occurrence of H2 dihydrogen, describe the isotopes of hydrogen and their important properties, describe the laboratory and commercial production of dihydrogen. Let us have a glimpse of some facts about hydrogen. Hydrogen is the first element in the periodic table. It has the simplest atomic structure amongst all elements having one proton and one electron in its atomic form. In the elemental form, it exists as a diatomic molecule H2 called dihydrogen. It forms more compounds than any other element. So, let us explore now some more facts about hydrogen to understand its uh, placement or position in the periodic table. As you can see in the periodic table, hydrogen is the first element in the periodic table and why it has been given such a unique position? You know that in the periodic table, elements are placed according to their electronic configurations. So, the electronic configuration of hydrogen is 1 s 1. Here, you can see that it has some similarity to the alkali metals, while we will also compare its similarity with halogens. So, let us first compare the similarities and then we will see what differences or dissimilarities it has with alkali metals or with halogens. So, as we have just said the electronic configuration is 1 s 1 and for alkali metals also you know that the electronic configuration is given as n s 1, where n stands for the principal quantum number and their electronic configurations are given as 2 s 1, 3 s 1, 4 s 1 etcetera. So, it is similar in electronic configuration to the alkali metals that is one aspect, but at the same time it is also short of by one electron to complete its uh, outermost orbit. It is this similarity with the halogens because in halogens also if you see that the general configuration is given as n s 2 n p 5 and if they gain one electron they will complete their octet, but here it is a two electron system and the first orbit will be completed by uh, the occupation of two uh, electrons. So, it is also short by one electron. So, by gaining one electron, uh, it is similar to complete its orbit uh, with halogens and by losing one electron, it is similar to uh, the alkali metals. That also is one similarity with the alkali metals and with the halogens. And what other similarity with the alkali metals is that it can form oxides, halides and sulphides. And now coming to the dissimilarities, you see some similarities are there, some dissimilarities are also there. If we see the ionization energies of hydrogen and compare it with those of the halogens, we see that the halogens have comparable ionization enthalpies with the hydrogen. That means, that the high ionization enthalpy of hydrogen which has a value of delta H 1312 kilojoules per mole is more resembling to those of halogens. For example, in fluorine the ionization enthalpy is 1680 kilojoules per mole rather than that of lithium which is 520 kilojoules per mole only. So, it, the ionization enthalpy of hydrogen resembles more with the halogens not with the alkali metals and it also forms diatomic molecules 
like halogens and hydrides and covalent compounds. So, you can see there are certain examples of similarities and certain dissimilarities with both alkali metals and the halogens. And also one more unique fact about hydrogen is when it loses its uh, only uh, proton it has, it has only one proton. So, after losing that proton, whatever we get, it is only the H plus ion, which is a bare nucleus, you can say, that is of very, very small size and it cannot exist on its own or free H plus ion is not uh, in existence and it always combines with other molecules or atoms present surrounding it. So, loss of electron from hydrogen results in the nucleus, bare nucleus which is H plus ions and the actual nuclear size is approximately 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 picometer. So, if we compare that size with the size of roughly the atoms or the elements, it is 50 picometers to 200 picometers. So, that is very uh, large size. If we talk about atoms and molecules, they are of very large size as compared to the bare proton. So, it always combines with the other elements or the atoms or molecules present in the vicinity. As a consequence, H plus ion does not exist freely and is always associated with other atoms or molecules. Thus, hydrogen resembles in some properties with alkali metals and with halogens. However, there are differences also with the properties of these groups of elements. Its unique properties thus favor its separate position in the periodic table. You can see that it has been placed separately in the periodic table. You will be excited to know some more facts about the occurrence of dihydrogen. We are calling it H2 because we are talking about here the elemental form and H2 is a molecule of hydrogen. It is the most abundant element in the universe. 70 percent of total mass of the universe is made up of hydrogen and also you know that it is the principal element in the solar atmosphere. In the sun you know that reactions of hydrogen or the combination of hydrogen take place to give us helium and it liberates a lot of energy, the solar energy we get from the sun. In the universe, you know that planets Jupiter and Saturn also consist mostly of hydrogen. And if we talk about the abundance by mass in the Earth's atmosphere, the abundance is 0.15 percent. Why it seems so low? Because hydrogen is very lightweight in nature. So, if we talk about the combined forms of the occurrence of hydrogen, in the earth crust and in oceans, you know, uh, it occurs to the extent of 15.4 percent and vast amount of oceans uh, contain water, which is if you say about uh, earth, it is 70 percent. The surface of our earth is made up of water or covered by water. And hydrogen is also present in plants and animal tissues in human body. It is also found in our bodies in the form of carbohydrates, proteins, hydrides and hydrocarbons and many more such compounds. Now, at this stage, it is also important to know about various isotopes of hydrogen and their properties. So, what is an isotope? Isotopes of an element have same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. Hydrogen has three isotopes, namely protium, deuterium and tritium. And if you the structures of these isotopes, you will see that hydrogen, which is protium, we are mostly familiar with, has only one electron and one proton but no neutron. The second isotope of hydrogen which has one neutron is known as deuterium and it also has only one proton and one electron. The third isotope of hydrogen namely tritium has two neutrons and 
again the number of protons remain one only and electron is also one only in tritium. So, you can see the structures of all these three isotopes and uh, realize that they differ from each other in the number of neutrons. Hydrogen or the protium first isotope no neutron, deuterium one neutron and tritium two neutrons. And if we talk about uh, deuterium, Professor H. C. Ure, who was an American scientist, got the Nobel Prize in 1934 for separating deuterium. The relative abundance of deuterium is 0.0156 percent as H d, as protium is a prominent form having the abundance of 99.985 percent. And if you see for tritium, it is just 1 atom per 10 to the power 18 atoms of protium if we compare and the relative abundance is 10 to the power minus 15 percent. So, you can say uh, very, very low in abundance and also it is the only radioactive isotope of hydrogen and it emits beta particles. And if we talk about now the physical properties of isotopes, what we are talking about for protium, deuterium or tritium, we have tabulated it for you and in the table you can see that since there are differences in their masses. So, this leads to the differences in their bond dissociation enthalpies also and that is why these isotopes react at different rates in their reactions. If we closely look at the table, you can see that the masses of the isotopes are different, their ionization enthalpies are different, their densities are uh, different and if we move from hydrogen to deuterium to tritium as the mass increase, few properties are in the increasing order. Having understood the properties of isotopes of hydrogen, now let us see how dihydrogen can be prepared by different methods in the laboratory and commercially. We will first focus on the methods of preparation of dihydrogen in the laboratory. There are two main methods, first is by the reaction of granulated zinc with dilute hydrochloric acid and the reaction is zinc plus 2 H plus ions gives us zinc ions and dihydrogen. In the second method of preparation also zinc is involved and now we are using it in the basic medium with the aqueous alkali and this reaction is in the presence of sodium hydroxide and we get sodium zincate and dihydrogen as a product. So, these were the two methods in the laboratory for the preparation of dihydrogen we will say because we are preparing the molecular hydrogen and if we now want to know how it is prepared commercially, there are many methods of commercial production of uh, hydrogen and we will see there are different methods of production of hydrogen commercially. We will focus on four methods. The first method is electrolysis of acidified water using platinum electrodes and you see that electrolysis can be done either in the acidic medium or in the basic medium and we get dihydrogen as one of the products by electrolysis of water. Second method is also electrolysis and it involves electrolysis of warm aqueous barium hydroxide solution between the nickel electrodes. Again third method electrolysis involving electrolysis of brine and this method you are also familiar because it is used for the manufacture of sodium hydroxide and chlorine gas and here we get hydrogen gas as a byproduct in this reaction. The reaction occurs like 2 sodium ions plus 2 chloride ions since the medium is aqueous, we say 2 molecules of water participate in this reaction and gives us sodium chloride and um, chlorine on one hand and hydrogen that is dihydrogen as one of the products or byproduct in this reaction. The fourth method involves reaction of steam on hydrocarbons or coke at high temperature in the presence of catalyst. If we say the general uh, equation for hydrocarbons, you know that the formula is C n H 2 n plus 2 and uh, 
then if they react with steam, they will produce at high temperature of 1270 Kelvin we have shown here in the presence of nickel catalyst carbon monoxide plus hydrogen. And if we specifically see the example of methane that is CH4 shown in the second reaction, it reacts with steam to give you carbon monoxide plus three molecules of gaseous dihydrogen. And uh, what is this CO plus 3 H2? You know very well it is a syngas we call. You know that syngas is uh, carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gas and syngas is used for the production of methanol. It is also known as water gas and it can be prepared by sewage, sawdust, scrap wood and newspapers also. And one more method to obtain syngas is from the gasification of coal where the reaction taking place is shown uh, on the screen like uh, coal is represented by C carbon basically plus reaction with water that is steam again it gives you carbon monoxide plus hydrogen syngas basically and whatever carbon monoxide present in syngas can be subjected to water gas shift reaction because from here also from CO we can obtain more of hydrogen. How? More of hydrogen can be obtained from carbon monoxide using water gas shift reaction if we treat it with steam and iron chromate catalyst to give us carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. Now, we are producing more of H2 from CO and what we are doing actually is we are using steam and from what steam is water actually ob oxygen is getting abstracted by carbon monoxide leaving behind hydrogen gas. And now CO2 produced in this reaction is removed by scrubbing with sodium arsenide solution. After seeing various methods of production of commercial hydrogen, let us have a look at the industrial production of a dihydrogen. You can see in the figure that 77 percent of dihydrogen is produced from petrochemicals, 18 percent is produced from coal, 4 percent is produced from electrolysis and 1 percent is produced by other methods. So, now having seen different methods of production, let us see what we have learned in this program as a whole. Hydrogen has unique position in the periodic table. It widely occurs in the universe in the free and the combined forms. The three isotopes of hydrogen are protium, deuterium and tritium. Dihydrogen can be prepared in the laboratory and commercially using different methods. After seeing this program, there are certain questions for you. You can find answers for these questions. What happens when H plus combines with water or methanol? Second question is how much water is present in human body? You must be curious to know, just find out. Write the reaction of hydrogen producing helium in the sun which is giving you all energy you uh, get from the sun. How is deuterium isolated? Read more about the work of Professor H. C. Ure who got the Nobel Prize. And what is brine of course, you are very familiar with this term. Read more about the concentration of salts in the sea, how much are different salts in the sea there. And one more question you would like to answer, how much salt can be accommodated in water to make it a saturated solution, a skill you will be using in your practicals also. So, this was uh, what we wanted to share with you in the first part of hydrogen part 1 program. In the next program hydrogen part 2, we will be uh, dealing with chemical properties of hydrogen because it forms many compounds and compounds with almost every element you can say and specifically we will be dealing with the hydrides, various types of hydrides will be explained in the next uh, program.